I was in the process of taking apart this little three jaw chuck. And, you know, I took it apart. Um, I gave it to Lance. As you can see, it's really nice. Lance went through it. He polished, stone, cling, did everything. So it's ready to be assembled, but... I rejected something. Yeah, he rejected something. In fact, uh, this one right here, and I maybe there was two, Patrick, that your grandfather gave to you. That's correct. This is but one. Three of the tools. The only one that didn't come from my grandfather is this one right here. Oh, oh the bezel set tool? Yeah. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you for a little ride out to the machine shop, and I'm gonna use our little tag CNC milling machine, and I'm gonna put this in a five seat collet block, yeah, and secure it to the table, and then just with a little tiny end mill, I'm just gonna make the little slot right here. Hello and welcome back. This is Shop Adventures 30. I'm Lance. I'm Patrick. Here we go. <laughs> We're at it again. Okay, so yeah, we got viewer mail coming up today. I got that, I can say. Yeah. But I don't have a lot to share. I only did one thing that was very, very important what I did. But it, that's what we chose to film. It, it was the only thing really. Right. What do you want to do? Watch me dig a trench? <laughs> right. That was pretty sad. And paint some trim. I think I did that. <laughs> that's right. You painted trim. I did. You know, it's tough living in the desert. I don't know if anybody understands the wind and the weather and the heat and the cold. It really tests paint. <laughs> oh, for outside... Oh boy, paint and wood. It doesn't doesn't yeah. go well here. Not at all. Yeah, not at all. But anyway, that's not what I filmed, so let me not share that for now, because <laughs> if there's something coming up, we'll get to it. Um, I, I, I take you to the on a little journey of, of, of a little sharing of Patrick's, some of the tools from his grandfather, um, the watchmaker tools. You saw one last week, and I'm mm -hmm. going to share a little more this week. I, I fit, wrapped up those last three, so I, but I tell a lot of story about it, because that's my only thing this week. Right, and they look sharp. I mean, they look beautiful, so I'm really excited. Easy to show with the them. word sharp. Those little parts are really sharp, all right. Oh, yeah, they are. Tell uh, me about it. Well, I need two days of recovery after each project because I had to get them done and do something else. So you'll find out. Okay, so Patrick, it was all on you this week, really. And I know he's running around like a crazy man because, well, we're right here under one roof. It's pretty obvious. So right. What, what did you do? Okay, well, I decided to share a couple of things. The first item was okay, if you remember last week, uh, at the beginning of my seeing, I was taking apart a 11 three-jaw chuck. Okay, well, I later, you know, I disassembled it. I gave all the parts to Lance so Lance could clean it, stone it, polish it. You know, he does his thing, you know, where he gets it in perfect condition. And then he looks over all the parts and checks for wear and damage. And then sometimes I'll do a rejection. And you did. <laughs> Want to explain really quick what was damaged? Oh, it was bad too. It was. Yeah. It's the three, three. It, I'll, I'll say this was three special cap screws. Yeah. With Patrick will elaborate. Okay. Yeah. So they they were damaged, and see what Levin does is, uh, Levin actually doesn't make the chucks. You know, they sell a three jaw, four jaw, and a six jaw chuck, but the the chuck portion is actually made in Switzerland. So they they purchase those, but then they do make the arbor and then the screws. And the three screws are, are, the purpose of the screws is they hold the arbor onto the chuck, okay? And so what Levin does for the screws is they customize them. They get just general uh, uh, socket head cap screws and they turn the outside di diameter. And the reason for that is because on the chuck, uh, where the screws go in, they're counterboard. And the problem is the counterboards are really slim and so the cap screws won't go in unless you turn the outside diameter. So that's what Levin does. So it's a really simple process. And you know, in the past, you know, uh, I'll admit, you know, we used to purchase replacement screws from Levin just because I don't know why. I was always scared to turn screws or bolts. You know, just something in my mind I always thought that you screws- know, Grade five, grade eight, you go, holy right. moly. Right, and you always think of, you know, these screws as being super, super hardened and you know yeah. just because it's just a method and how they're made so but what i'm going to show you is you know eventually i i decided hey you know what let's see what it takes to to make these myself 
And it's actually, I was really surprised. You know, even on our small little equipment, and in this case, I use one of our little small tiny lathes, and I can turn these screws no problem and with really good finishes. So I decided, hey, you know what, I'm going to share that with you because, you know, maybe there's some viewers like, like I was, was afraid to turn screws and bolts. But, you know, if you have the right cutter and the right speed. We're used to making screws. But oh, yeah. Not, you know, we make them all day long. We, that's what we've done for decades. Right. It's, it, it's that we had to take these hardened ones. Right, hardened and ones. bigger than our normal world of size. Thing. Right. I think mean, these were big whoppers there. <laughs> to you, you'll probably think they're tiny, but to us, yeah, they're big. Oh, yeah. But these yeah. trucks, they are, I have to say, just a little compliment to the Swiss-made trucks. They, they, they are very well made. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. You know, and it is, it is the star of the show. And, the, you know, the way we film that chuck is basically the focal point of about 80% of our filming. Yeah. As far as machining time goes now. Sure. You know, because we that's primarily what we are, is a turning place. You know? That's right. Okay, well, that was Oh, and the, second, so, and then the second project I shared is, okay, as you know, I we purchased a metric gauge uh, to replace the imperial gauge on our 11 micro drill accessory. And when I purchased the replacement, I thought, okay, this is going to be a really simple, you know, switch, you know, a drop it, in. It never is. <laughs> it never is. Might as well just get over and, it. And I'm going to detail exactly why it wasn't a drop in replacement and what I had to do to make it fit. Because it's a beautiful gauge. Oh, it is. It comes. It's a Mar Federal, right? I, it's a, it's a Mar Federal, and oh, we just love we love those. You know, they're good, very good quality gauges for the price. That's why we use them. Yeah. The yeah. Pretty, pretty re the repeatability is really good. Yeah. So we're really happy with it. them. So that's, so I have those two things to share. It's not bad. Yeah. All right. And there's a surprise in that video this week from you. Uh, we do something out in that machine shop that maybe some new viewers didn't know about. So we're not going to say anything now though, right? Oh no. Yeah. There's little details. Yeah. yeah. You'll, you'll like that. I, you know, <laughs> I don't like to put teasers out, but why not? <laughs> you know, I, I know I like, I like it to, I like teasers when I watch videos. Oh, sure. Oh you know, yeah. Okay, well we got a package. Why don't we why don't we move on to that before we move on to our new, brand new highlights. So before we get to the highlights, you want to open that? Yeah, and this is really incredible. Okay. <laughs> I know why. Because, because we don't win anything. No. Okay, I, I don't think I've won anything in my whole life. You've won some sunglasses. 1988. <laughs> About April. <laughs> and we won Steve Lane's beautiful. Oh, Precision I'm sorry. Stones. Yeah, that was lucky. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, we got really lucky again, and we both won separately. Yeah, because that that nice couple didn't want to have a fight over uh, here. They didn't want to hear us fight. <laughs> yeah, maybe. So somehow or another, we both won. And it's really nice. Do you want to talk about who they are, or do you want me to? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I can. Yeah, why don't you? It's Casey and Mary Sue, and they own a... They do YouTube videos. They're really unique. Apparently, firearms are extremely ex a very high level experience for them. And these exotically made, unique hammers. You're gonna go watch their videos and figure that out. We'll put a link in below, though. Um, but it is five tons with guns. That's a pretty cool name. And they have one of those really big trucks. You know, the big uh, military vehicles. Oh right. They, they've done some videos with that, and that's pretty good. Shoot, even Mary Sue drives it. Now I feel like a little wimpy over here. <laughs> oh, they're packaged well. I'm gonna let you open yours and open. I just did, did you sure? Oh, How do I know it's mine and it's yours? Maybe yours is better than mine. What did you do? <laughs> no, honestly, I didn't peek. Okay. Oh, want to explain that their contest? They they selected ten names from a bowl. Oh yeah. Right. When yeah. They expected ten names to win. What's in these packages? That's right. And. And your name was selected first. Oh yeah, I got it right one right away. Yeah, you won right away, like second or third. Then they had a bonus draw. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's <laughs> right. Originally, they're going to give away five hammers. Yeah, okay? they were. And they handed up after five. He said, "Ah, let's do another five. And I was part of the second round. Yeah, first one in the second round. So that was really nice. Yeah, like so that, that was really great. Oh, really appreciate these. So uh, who, we, we love things. Who wants to go first? Uh, let's just together. Come on. Let's do this all. Mine's stuck. I reserve the right to swap. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Look at that. It's, it's a it's a hammer blank. 
It's a pattern. No, at first I thought that was my name. The <laughs> pat. <laughs> <laughs> pattern. All right. Well, I know the material oh, really isn't what nice. you think. It's a composite mixture of several things. You'll have to go watch the videos because I've got to go back and watch and know what I did. I thought there'd be a note in here, but there isn't. Yeah, but we're happy to have them. They're they're uh, they're hammer blank. You, well, I, you can use it, but they're a blank, and I believe they're made of a special material, not what you think. Yeah, and he forges these. He does at at, at his home, right? Yeah, I believe he's right there. Yeah, they're really neat people. They're really nice too, though. They're a joy. Oh, really nice. Well, so I'm glad I have my own. <laughs> well, I, that just means if he has his own, there's a chance I get to keep this. It won't disappear into a drawer in the uh, workshop area. So, hey, thanks a lot, guys. We appreciate it a lot. Oh, yeah, really. We really appreciate it. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Something new at the end of this openings now, the topics, right? I, I wanted to start this new thing called Highlights. What's coming to Shop Adventures in the near close few weeks? Yeah. Okay, so let's go down a little list of them, shall we? You want to take one or you want me to do it? Go ahead, and I can okay. chime in. I chuck. Okay, we, I like to work so well on that Swiss chuck that I decided I wanted to do the other half a dozen or so. And here's why. I kind of mentioned it a minute ago. They are the star of the show. That chuck is the first thing you're going to see on that lathe and that little material sticking out of there. Are you kidding me? That's oh, why yeah. We're, that's why we're updating our cameras and everything. I don't know when that'll be. That's quite a project for us, but we're doing it. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to change those chucks up a little bit. They've been sitting for a while. They got a little sticky in the last two years, not doing much as we right. normally used to do before we stopped working. Well, you Rather. know, just like the eleven accessories, yeah. what happens is we do one, we realize how well it functions again. And see, when we we did this first chuck and we rebuilt it, cleaned it, and oh boy, it works so smooth. Oh, yeah. And we're like, we've got to do all the rest of our chucks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they'll look really pretty that way. They, yeah. Those are inspired by the channel, but they also give us a little better performance too, right? Yeah. A smoothness for us. Right. Okay, and then we got, uh, let's see. Where's... Oh, yeah, I'm going to take you out around the yard. Okay, now, there's a reason I'm taking us around the yard, huh? Whose fault is it? Whose fault? Whose fault is it we're going to go outside and look around and do some stuff? I don't know. Burning. Oh, right, right, outside, right. That's right. right. I'm like, I'm like, like what the hell's he talking I'm about like, now again already? I'm like, walking around the yard. No, you know what? About a month ago or so, you know, Vernon came to our Instagram channel. And one of the comments he wrote me, I wasn't sure if it's a private message Wait or a, a comment. Link to that channel below because that's where all the action happens. I'm not involved on the Instagram. That's actually Patrick over there. Yeah. So it's all run like very professional. <laughs> no. Okay. So anyway, but Vernon, one of his suggestions was, you know, it'd be really nice if we showed the environment where we live, you know, because that's what we, you know, all our videos, we're always sharing our workshops, you know, our property. But it, we thought, you know, Vernon thought, well, it'd be really nice if you could show your outside environment, how it looks. So we're going to take it a step further and we're actually going to go for a little ride. Aren't we? Yeah, that means two things to a guy in the counting over here. That means that we're going to spend our money on gasoline. We never leave this place. <laughs> and, well, we'll even share the odometer reading, huh? When we, we drive a 2002 Jeep, we love it. Yeah. We take great care of it and has very, very low, probably lowest miles on any car at 2002 you've ever heard of in your life for a daily car. Yeah, what does it have now? About 40,000? Not more than 40. Yeah, it's quite old. 30 some. We, we maintain, yeah. in fact, we maintain that car ourselves. We do everything here. Yeah. We do. And we're going to take you up for a ride. We're going to get you out of this valley floor. And we're going to go spend even more money, Vernon. <laughs> we're going to buy lunch out. We don't eat out. Um, we, Not very often. No, we save all our money to buy new tools. That's what. That's the choices you have to make in life. Well, you're going to be amazed. We're going to take you somewhere that's more of a local's place. Yeah. And they have the best hamburgers around. I mean, you wouldn't normally walk in to order a hamburger or eat at this place. probably wouldn't go near it. Yeah, but it's just amazing. The hamburgers are the best. So. And they even have their own uh, butcher shop in there. That's right. They have a butcher shop. Right. That's a fascinating. Well, you would do it in a small town. People who live in small towns know you, you have to do a lot of things in, in one store, probably. Right. You know, you won't make it. So we do the road trip. We do that. Uh, Patrick, um, I know that. We might be sharing some information about spindle rebuilds coming up because remember it'll be in the next few videos so we can bring might, some highlights might come about 
That's right. That's actually one of my big projects this week is preparing for the videos. Uh, you know, I'm doing the research, gathering the material. Because, you know, a lot of this stuff, it's all in my head. You know, so I've got to get it out on paper, uh, look up some of the material. Because I want to share a lot of the material that you guys can download. Um, and so that's basically what I'm doing. I'm hoping to have that all wrapped up this week. And we hope to start filming all our episodes for the Spindle Rebuild videos next week. So that's our new highlights. That's what yeah. we're doing every at the end of week, each week, at the end of show, each show each week, we'll do little highlights about what we see coming and things that have been done will come off of there. Yeah. So you kind of have a path of where we're going instead of what are we doing and what we're saying today. I'd like you to guys see a little bit further into the future with us. Right. So I hope that was good. I think that was nice. Oh, and just to add, to add, once we're done with the Spindle Rebuild uh, projects, we're actually going to start focusing on producing our product. That's very important. That's, That's true. really important. And it became really yeah. more important because of that, because of that three C call it issue. Right. We're so, kind of stuck. Right. Yeah, we didn't realize it. So that's that's what we're doing. Dimensional checking here to see what our max cutting could be. But we'll get into that later. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Let's get out and get some work done. Starts off with me or whatever. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye. Okay. We are out to see Patrick, and I believe we're going to get a little bit of some machining, a little bit of education today or something too. Uh -oh. I just wanted to share something I thought would be interesting for some of the viewers. Okay, if you remember last week, uh, Lance came in and wanted an update, so I shared a few things with you guys. Well, one of the first things you saw me work on was I was in the process of taking apart this little three-jaw chuck. And, you know, I took it apart. Um, I gave it to Lance. As you can see, it's really nice. Lance went through it. He polished, stone, cleaned, did everything. So... It's ready to be assembled, but... I rejected something. Yeah, he rejected something. <clears throat> when he cleaned everything, it's really funny because, you know, when 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 a tool or a machine's dirty and, and full of grease, you really it's really hard to detect damage, wear. But once you clean it, you know, once you clean everything, like he cleans everything with acetone most of the time, once you get all that dirt and grime off, it's amazing the damage and the wear you see. And that's what he found was... He found uh, some of these screws. Okay, these screws, uh, they're actually from, um, Levin makes these. And where these go is, is okay, Levin actually doesn't make uh, the chuck itself. Yeah, it goes like this. The chuck is actually made in Switzerland. And then Levin buys them. And then they actually, they, they do make the arbor. So the arbor goes in the back like that, and then there's three screws that secure it, that screw in the front like this, okay? And the thing that Levin has to do is, uh, they have to take a socket head screw like this, but then they have to turn the diameter because the head is too big to fit in the slot right here. So that's why you see, you know, this is actually started out as a socket head screw, and then they turn it, and then that way it can fit into the, the slot right there. Okay. So what I wanted to share with you is, you know, in the past, in my, you know, in my early days, I would have been, a, if you told me, you know, why don't you go ahead and turn them on your small lathe uh, yourself, I would have told you, oh, you're crazy. You know, because I always figured, you know, I always figured screws and, bolts were super hard you know especially grade five grade eight bolts you know yeah, I just, us made right i just always assume you know there's no possible way for us to machine them on our small little lathes but i was so wrong you know one day many years ago i said you know what well that's i'm gonna i'm gonna kind of jump on another subject on a little lathe because i in the past i wouldn't have tried this on one of our 11 lathes you know, as you well know, you know, 11 lathes are really high precision and we're really careful. You know, we don't, we don't want to machine, you know, mystery material on it. We don't want to abuse them. We don't want to really push them too hard because, you know, if we damage one of our 11 setups, it's really expensive to repair. And that's one of the reasons uh, we purchased this little lathe. Okay, we purchased this about... I think about 12, roughly about 12 years ago. And we actually bought it from Pin Tool Company. 
And the company that makes it is Top Tech. It's made in China, of course. And it's a 5.5 swing by 10 inch length. So you can turn 10 inch between centers. And the reason why we bought this is at the time we wanted a small little lathe. You know, as you can see, it's pretty small, about the same size as the 11 instrument lathe. But we want something that we could abuse. You know, we want something that we could throw some mystery still on it. We can, or we just, we could push it really hard and not have to worry about damaging it. But still be big enough not to have to take it out to the machine shop. That's right. To have to use the, uh, the what is it, 27 by? The 11 by 27. Yeah. Yeah. Because we do have that really large lathe, okay? So we want something really small. That's a good point. We want something also small that we could just keep in the workshop as well. So that's why we bought this. And it's been wonderful. Uh, it's it's amazing what you get, you know. Tw we you know we bought this to about twelve years ago, and I think we only bought it for about four hundred dollars. <laughs> and it's amazing what it came with, you know. It came with a three jaw chuck, a four jaw chuck. Like here's a three jaw chuck. So it's pretty nice, you know. It's really heavy duty. Um, as you can see, it came with an ER11 collet a chuck, and it even came with a little collet set. I mean, it came with everything. I mean, it came with a follow rest, steady rest, life center, uh, dead center. QP? Uh, QC? This actually I bought. Oh, did you add that? Yeah. Actually, what came with it, let's see if I can just real quick. So here's the, uh, something in a drawer? So here's the steady. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Here's the steady rest and here's the follow rest. See, and it actually came with this. See? So this actually fits on top. So if you're curious, you know, why do you only have one axis? Well, this actually fits on top, but it did come with that. So that's pretty neat. Um, so yeah, so it came with a lot. I mean, so it was, it was a heck of a deal, but you know, they, I think it's really weird. They sold, they sold a few of them and then they discontinued it. So I'm not sure about that, but it's been, so we've been using it for 12 years and it hasn't failed us. What's really funny though, if you notice, you'll notice that uh, we didn't do this. Actually the manufacturer did this. <laughs> they put little half moon, uh, scrape, you know, scrape marks. Oh, the scraping. Yeah. yeah, the scraping. So they actually scrape these dovetails, and I guess just for cosmetics, because I don't think they really serve a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> they, they actually put little half moons for oil retention. Okay. You know? And they were here as well, but we wore them off, I believe. Yeah. This is our go-to, get it done. Just make me a quick little, we make a lot of little pins and pieces and parts and holding things all the time. Yeah. We just, we just run over here, we do it, we go back to 11, and we go back to making bars. Yeah. Depends. But it's coming really handy. We're really happy we have it. Okay. So let me get back to the screw. So what I want to do is, I thought it would be interesting to show you this little lathe uh, turning uh, socket head screw. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that for you. So what we've got to do is the diameter we're shooting for is almost, it's roughly about 3 sixteenths. So here, we'll put it here. I've already, you know, got the collet set up. Yeah, but mainly I just want to show you how easy it is to really turn uh, screws and bolts, on, especially on a little tiny lathe like this with, you know, and this isn't really rigid at all either. should do okay the cutter I'm using I'm using one of those brazed cutters okay, and this one actually I get these from American Carbide Tool Company they're made in the USA so they're very good quality and just a note when you buy these brazed carbide tools they come in three carbide grades they come in C2 carbide C6 carbide and micrograin Okay, and just I'll just go over really quickly. You know, the C2 is tailored more for your, you know, cast iron, bronze, brass, aluminum, your softer materials, because that grade of carbide is 
is is a little softer. It's not as it's not as glass hard, so it's more durable. Um, however, you can't you, you can't. It's not really good for harder metals like steel or stainless steel because it would wear out really quick. So that's why they have C6. So C6 is a harder, tougher carbide. So it has uh, better wear properties, but the only drawback is it, it'll easily crack if you push it too hard. Okay, but what I use now is this came later. They call it MG and MG's micrograin. And micrograin carbide gives you the best of both worlds. It, um, it, it's, it's actually the properties, I guess the grain, the carbide grains are much finer and much tighter. And what they're able to do is they're able to make a carbide that's both super hard and super tough and super durable. And they actually tell you that you can use this for all metals. You can use it for, from your soft materials like brass and aluminum all the way to your steel, stainless steels, and even your really tough alloys, your titanium, you know, uh, titanium, hardened steel, uh, you know, everything. So, and so it's a little bit more expensive, not too, so not that, you know, I think it's worth the money to pay the little extra fee for it. And, um, and you get the best of both worlds. You don't have to carry two carbide types. So just wanna make a note of that. So that's what I'm gonna use for this. Uh, this little turning example. Okay, let me see. I think that's. Okay. It's all tight. Make sure it's all tight. Because we don't have our permanent overhead cameras mounted yet, I'm probably going to get some flack for uh -oh. my filming skills here today. <laughs> but oh well, it's coming, guys. It will definitely be here for the product. Yes. Don't kid yourself. We, They'll, those things will be over every job we do. Yeah, we are working on it. <laughs> I'm going to go about. I'm going to go about a thousand RPMs. Okay. Let's see. Let's get out try. Okay. Yeah, as you can see, it turns pretty, pretty easy. Uh, let me just take a quick measurement, see where I'm at. Okay, we're about two, let's see, 2.15. Two and fifteen. Yeah, I'm sorry. Point two fifteen. <laughs> Perfect. That's uh, I think I I think I did the other one like that. 1.90 about. It opened up a little bit. Okay. That's that's pretty good. Okay. 
Now what we're going to do, you know, this actually the finish isn't too bad, but when I learned, usually I like to polish up, uh, polish this up, and I found a suggestion the other day by one of our Instagram buddies. I think, yeah, we watch his videos too on YouTube. We love his videos. He's, he's a very good guy. He's really nice, and he knows exactly what he's doing, and we really uh, look up to him a lot. Oh, yeah, and you really can learn a lot from him. And his name is Robin Renzetti. That's it. Cool name, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's interesting, he, let's see, when did he do this? Well, he did this back in December, uh, and um, he did, so you could tell... To us, these are big parts, <laughs> and um, as you can see, the the finish is really good on these parts. And then, but he says in his description uh, that he uses Bright Boy or Kratzik sticks or the Magic Sauce for a glossy finish. So I go, well, you know what? We have used Kratzik, like we, but we, like this is a Kratzik wheel, and we have used these with great results. But I wasn't aware of the Bright Boy. He mentions further in the comments that Bright Boy makes it in a like a stick format. Let's see if I can get it. See, and this is how it looks like. So it's really handy. It's a, it's it's a perfect, you know, perfect size for using on the lathe. So I thought it was really good. And, you know, I'm always willing to try new things. So I say, hey, you know, let's give it a shot. It would be perfect. I don't think. Uh, just uh, real quick, I don't think this would work on micro parts or in watchmaking because I just think it, the grit uh, is too coarse. But for like larger parts, especially your steels and harder materials, it just does wonders. So that's why I wanted to demonstrate for you guys. So here, let me open it up. Okay, and always we want to, because it's abrasive, we want to protect the waves. Go a little grit, not chips. That's right. And then we want to use the paper towel, never rags, <laughs> for safety. Okay. Basically. Oh, let me see if I can put it in the line. Yeah. There we go. Stay real still. Sure. That's yeah, really nice. Yeah, isn't it nice? Isn't that beautiful? You better say thanks to Robin, huh? Oh yeah. I mean, guy, look at the difference and just a great finish. But see how easy, even on, the, on this little tiny lathe, uh, you can do these type of jobs. And I think. And you know, the important thing is also having a really good cutter that's appropriate for it. So yeah, I just wanted to share that because, you know, like I told you, you know, in the past, we, we, we would have thought, you know, it would have been possible to do it on these little tiny lathes. So that's how I wanted to demonstrate it for you guys. And yeah, so now we do it all the time. So I'm gonna make, uh, let's see, I made two, so I just need to make one more and I can put this chuck together and this chalk, I believe we're going to use it for our next project, which we're going to share with you. So that'll be exciting. So that's it. All right. Well, thanks, Patrick. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Okay, we're in the machine shop, and word has it, Lance completed the Watts tools. I did. You know, there were four when I shared them last week, and these are tools for the museum that we're starting. And these are the first four tools, only we, we know that, and there's be tools and machinery. But we know that because... These four tools are retired. In fact, 
Uh, this one right here, and I may be, there was two, Patrick, that your grandfather gave to you. That's correct. This is but one. Three of the tools. The only one that didn't come from my grandfather is this one right here. Oh, oh the bezel set tool? Yeah. Okay. But the other three came from my grandfather. Okay, well that's, see, so I had to put a lot more care into these. <laughs> they're historical to us, but they're also personal to us. Um, people believe in us uh, many years ago, and hopefully they still do. <laughs> that sounded kind of bizarre. Anyway, I demonstrated this last week. I showed you how it straightens the teeth of a gear. Yeah, it's a really neat tool. It's actually one of my favorite tools that we have. It figures it's made up of like 40 parts, and they're so tiny. In fact, I got a comment the other day about that I'm, I'm kind of a large person. I, I told someone that I'm like a big bowl in a china, sh a big bowl in a china shop. <laughs> And it's true, Patrick likes everything small, even the little walkways and hallways in the workshop are small. It's just one of those things where a guy like Neem needs a rounded corner, you know. Okay. Well, these tools are really small, and they did not make tools anything near this today. So it's just fascinating to get to work with these and to know that we're going to have them on display for many, many years to come. So let me share these other three that I've had to speed up normally over the course of time for the museum. Of course, the time being, for the next several years, as near as I can tell, I will be refurbishing, we will together be in some cases, refurbishing, rebuilding tools and machinery that may or may not be used in the production of our product, but they will be carefully cur curated and put into our museum. And that is what we're here for. That's one of the biggest reasons we're here besides sharing our knowledge and leaving a, a blueprint of some of the things on how we do them and things we have. Right? That's right, Pat. That's right. That's a good way to put it, yeah. Okay, so these four, normally I'm just going to bring you one up once in a while. So throughout the years of this channel, you're always going to have a tool come up, be done. We're going to share it, either being done or being finished or, or whatever, starting yeah. it or whatever, and, and just kind of carry you through, along with making our product and doing educational videos. So these three, this four kind of just starts us off and we want to get them out of here. So there were three left, so there's going to be the first four tools that go get in and put in their glass case. That's right, right? That's right. And this next one here... She's a little beauty. Not so bad. These are little. These are actually little cutters, believe it or not. Uh, these here are. I'm sorry. Yeah. And this is a little little set. Uh, uh, there's. A, you want to see that little cutter? See the little cutter? Oh see? yeah. Here, let me get, let me get a good. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. See, can you see that little slot right there? That's... That little slot. That's what creates the bezel. And that bezel is in a watch plate. And that watch plate is where the jewel sets. And the jewel is what a pivot rides in. And the, that's to keep from wear. You always hear about wristwatches, you know. It, it has a 17 jewel and a 40 jewel, and I've heard it all. I mean, they, 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 for a while there in, in watch movements, just so you know, it, it got completely out of hand. Oh, it did. You know, they, some, some watch <laughs> manufacturers used to place jewels on the watch plate that had no purpose. Just to call it, a, so they could call it a 50 jewel that's and beat right. the last manufacturer who had a 40 jewel, exactly. which, which he didn't have 10 that he used on there either. <laughs> Yeah, so that's really funny. It, it is because, yeah, it only complications can only get so much going on that need jewels for the pivots. But anyway, okay, that being said, this little tool lets us do something. It lets us set the di this, this is how we pick the diameter of the jewel that's going to get that's going to get a bezel made with this tool, and it's going to get burnished later on the lathe, and that's, that's what it does. That's correct. Its sole function is to do that. Okay, that's great. Oh, and just a note, I'm not sure if you mentioned it, no, oh. but the bezel set jewel type was eventually replaced by the friction jewel. Oh, that's right. That's the current way we do things. That's and, correct. And we've been and they've been that way for a while. That's what this is very retired that's here. Correct. But right. we but on old watches, this is what we do. Yeah, we still come across them. We do. Yeah. Now, there's some old movements and they're not going away anytime soon. Next up is this funny looking little guy. Talk about a work of art. Okay, let me see if I could describe this one. Um, have we actually used this tool? Yeah, we have. It okay. does come in handy, especially when there's a lot of damage and uh, you know we have to get that precise. Well, you're, you're gonna explain it, but we do come across it, not often though. Not this, in our line of work. These pins in here are just sharp as they look. This is a very hard tool to do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be nice about it. Here's what you do, though. This is really neat. Let me just share it real quick. You would put two watch gears in here. And you. this is a little adjuster. This lets me spread. Let me see if... Yeah, let me see here. 
See, there's a spring loaded on here. It's a nice blued steel there. And then, uh, uh. Somebody did a nice bluing job on and, and you spread this out. You put two gears in here and you bring this together till you get the proper mesh between the teeth. Once you have that there, you'll have a watch plate here. And you'll put, there'll be a hole in it already. You'll probably already have a hole drilled, but you have to. That's right. One goes, one pin goes in the hole, and the one you want to mesh the other gear to that's set up in here, you put this down in that hole, you put this one next to it here. Am I getting it? Let me get my, there. And you do, you know, you scribe it. So yes. I'm going to scribe it across here, and I'm going to leave a line, and then I, that's going to give me that distance from this hole to this one. That's right. And that's a fabulous tool. Yeah, because imagine without a tool like this, how would you acquire that distance? Yeah, and, and not to, and it's not one; it's a lot. So you'd have to do a lot of mathematical, you know. Yeah, I don't know where your movement might end up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to stand clear. Yeah. Okay. And the last one, this little puppy here, is a repivot tool. This one's dynamite. Especially if you guys ever work with drills or, or end mills, <laughs> this, this is the epitome of it. Okay, I'm just going to pull this out. Can I pull this out? Oh, yeah, go this ahead. This would be a drill bit in the end here, per se. Let's see if I can get that. Can you get that? Okay, so okay, this, is, this is actually a drill bit. This is actually a drilling unit. And what this drilling unit is going to do is you put a gear in here that has its axle. In an axle of a wrist watch or clock... You you have the little pivots, one on each side of that little axle where the gear's in the center. So you got your gears, you got your little axle, and you got your two little pivots. Well, the pivots break, they bend, and they, things happen, right? Right. So what you do is you put your, your axle back in here with your pivot gone, you, the side that's bad. And you, that's right. you press this in here until you, until you get this the, the, that, that axle pressed into one of these little slots. Am I going to get in there, Pat? Yeah, they're like little cups. They're all different sizes. That just holds the uh, shaft. The end of the shaft which prior to putting the shaft the gear shaft in there you would file it flat very flat yeah very flat because it needs to go in that cup and be flush and why that is is that little drill bit's going to get worked in here but it's not going to you're not turning this believe it or not this is going to do you see these little pulleys you pick one this is for the wrist watch this is say for a pocket watch and this would be on a very small scale of course from a wall clock a clock that's right okay this would be a really tiny though these can get those can get really large for clocks but the watch sure. that's about right yeah okay so what we do here is you put this little guy in here when it's in the bigger than necessary so let's take the wristwatch when you put that little guy in there and you take this very period this is actually the correct one for this that's right. This is a bow. I'm not playing a violin. I don't play instruments. But mm -hmm. but you, this would go on that little gear, on that little pulley. And you put that on there and you, wrap, and, and you go back and forth. And you are the power drill. You're, you're the power drill and you just move the drill bit into it. That's See? right. And this is locked into a vise, just so you know. So you got this two, two prongs here, which is quite a lot for this. And, and then you use the little bow and you go back and forth. Now... I can't have anybody thinking that, yes, this is the period bow, and this is the one that's going to be placed with it in, 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 uh, in the museum uh, case, their little case, or little, I think it's the world's smallest museum at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here's one, you, I just because you guys always hear it, and we never shut up about it around here, Eleven. This is Eleven Bow. I bet you didn't know if you'd cared. They did, they did make Eleven Bow uh, for doing what you just saw me do, manual, manual drilling, basically manual operation of a of a of a wheel here um, yeah it is amazing it is stamped leaven it is and uh, you, you'll never hear about it they don't sell them anymore it's been a thousand years they don't do any specialty watch tools at all today actually everything they do is uh, the base equipment like the lathes and the drill presses right and the micro drills and right turrets and stuff like that just for general stuff so I thought you guys like to see one of these it's a pretty rare old stock here especially if you're a leaven fan yeah, if you like if you love 11 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is it so but you know we, we have to we have to be in one camp i mean my monarch friends are pretty pro monarch okay so <laughs> you go easy on me on us on, on us on that 11 thing but anyway i want to share the bows with you i want to share this with you today uh this is our museum start and we're real proud of it we're thankful to have you all along because we have only the two of us to share it with if we didn't have you yeah and they're pretty neat i think that's it right no they look great yeah i'm really proud of them they're going to look really sharp in the display.
Yep, so I hope you guys don't mind. We're gonna, this gonna, channel's gonna mix up a little bit. We're gonna have some tools. We're always gonna have tools throughout the year, so just enjoy that along the way too, knowing that while we make a product. We'll be doing lots of things, so there's something for everybody, right? Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. All right, guys. Thanks for coming out and seeing me. Okay, bye. Okay, we are in here to see Patrick about a micro drill from Levin. Yes, hey guys. Yes, if you remember last week, I showed you the micro drill accessory again from Levin. And, you know, it's, it's completed, just a, a spindle's missing. And I showed you that uh, it came with this Michi Toil dial indicator. And, uh, you know, uh, you saw last week where I shared a Sterrett surface plate and one of our brand new um, Mar Federal test indicators, which we're gonna use for the spindle rebuild project. Okay, and while I purchased those, you know, purchased those gauges and stuff, I thought, well, you know what, this is a good time to replace this dial indicator. And the reason why we want to replace it is because this is Imperial, and as you know, we primarily work in metric. So, you know, we can, we, we can do the conversions back and forth, but we'd, we'd rather not. You know, we'd rather have uh, metric gauges if possible. What he's and trying to say is, <laughs> is that one of us can convert really naturally. That would be Patrick. And the other <laughs> one of us, you better set him up in Imperial or you better set him up in metric because <laughs> if you try to go back and forth, you're going to end up with some pretty funny looking sized products. <laughs> and, you know, and even I make mistakes occasionally. You know, everybody makes mistakes converting back and forth. So, and we're just, just, just as a recap, you know, this... This uh, dial indicator goes in right here. Let me just show it in operation real quick. Okay, so it goes like that. Okay, so when you're doing your drilling operation with this handle, see this moves back and forth. So the spindle's here, you got your drill bit. So you're going into the work. So this you use to get your exact depth. Okay, and um, so it, 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 it's worked perfect. And you know, you have your little adjustments and so forth. Okay. So to replace this, I found an equivalent uh, from Mar Federal. Uh, we really like these gauges, really good value for the money. Um, and this particular one's made in Germany. So we're really happy with that. And uh, you, as you can see- Here, hold them up real close. Can you wanna bring them up? It, it probably works today. Oh, sure. Is that good? Got it. Mm -hmm. See, as you can see, uh, this one uh, pretty much fits the requirements pretty good. As you can see, the size is pretty equivalent. I believe uh, the travel on the Imperial one is a quarter inch, and the travel on this one's five millimeter. So it's a little tad short, but still, it's still uh, more than enough for our needs. And um, one of the things we like about it too, here, let me get closer for you. One of the things we like about it is it has a little sub dial. So it keeps track of the revolutions, you know, where this one, see, you can kind of get messed up with this. So this is kind of a nice feature. So we really like that. Okay. But um, I, I, I kind of overlooked something when I purchased this. You know, I thought, okay, we, we'll order this new one and it'll just be a direct replacement. Well, <laughs> I was wrong. What I found was on this Imperial version, the shank right here, the diameter is 3 8 inch, okay? But on a metric gauge, obviously the shank's gonna be metric, and it's actually eight millimeters in diameter. And roughly that translates to about, uh, what I say, 5 sixteenths. So it's a little, it's a tad smaller in diameter uh, than the 3 8 So um, that was a kind of a little setback, but that's fine. All we have to do is we just have to make a bushing so um, I'm gonna make a brass bushing out of brass, and it's just gonna be here, you know, just a little simple uh, bushing that's gonna be press fit in here. Um, we just have to cut a slot, uh, and the slot's really important because you know um, when you put the dot, when we put the dial in here, you secure the dial by tightening up this socket head screw right here. So we need that slot so that way it could tighten up against the shank of the indicator and secure it really well. So I've actually started on this project already. Um, I, I actually did the first uh, operation 
So I took a little piece of brass and as you can see, I already turned the outer diameter and, and the inside diameter. Can you get the Got it. Perfect, okay. Okay, and what I shot for is for the outer diameter, I went with a nice, you know, I wanted a light press fit. So that way, once it's in here, I, I don't want it to fall out or whatever. So it's just gonna be a light press fit and it seems pretty good, okay. But then for the inside, uh, it's actually, I did one of my favorite, uh, uh, what would you say? Um, I didn't want I didn't want a friction fit, uh, so basically I took a pin gauge. This is an eight millimeter pin gauge. So this okay, is listen the, up closely now. <laughs> yeah, this is exact. Be very proud. This is the exact diameter of this shank right here. So I took this out with me, and what I shot for is I want a nice, smooth but tight fit. See, if I go back and forth, I can't feel any play whatsoever. But but it's also really smooth. And what I, why this is my favorite type of fit is because it's also airtight, if you can listen. And I really like the, you know, so it's super nice and smooth, no play, and just that satisfying air friction fit, you know. Can you hear that, Lance? Oh, I can hear it. <laughs> So, He's all proud, and that's what I want to be sure the, uh, we well, can pick up here. Well, that's my, one of my favorite type of fits. So, okay, so uh, there's two operations left. Um, so I did this on the lathe, and I didn't record it for you guys because you've seen me uh, do a lot of turning already, and it, so that's pretty boring. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you for a little ride out to the machine shop, and I'm going to use our little tag CNC milling machine and I'm gonna put this in a 5C collet block, yeah, and secure it to the table, and then just with a little tiny end mill, I'm just gonna make the little slot right here. So, and um, especially for our some of our newer view, uh, viewers, uh, we wanna share the tag, our little tag CNC milling machine, uh, just in case, you know, some of our viewers haven't seen it yet, but we have used it in the past in some of our earlier videos. As long as you have a little time on your side, she gets everything made that you asked it to do. Yeah, we're, you know, we're really impressed. You'll see it. It's a really tiny, small, bent top milling machine. But you know what? We've cut titanium it's with grade it. Grade 5 titanium. Yeah. It's uh, three, 316 to stainless steel. <laughs> yes. And, and I mean, we've cut it. And I, I'm okay. Yeah, it does take all day. Yeah, it does take all day, but it can get it done. And surprisingly, it does a really good job. You know, you have to use... I mean... You have to use a proper end mill. That's been really critical. But you know, it does the job. And like Lance says, if, if you've got the time, it will do it. So it's a great one-off machine. Yeah. We really have it to do engraving. That's really what. That's we right. Because we have actually the uh, rotary table. Yeah, we have the fourth axis going on. Yes. So yeah, we can do engraving on a s cylindrical surface. Yeah. So that's really neat. So okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to share that the milling operation with you. And then I'm going to take it to the lathe really quick, you know, cut, uh, do the cutoff operation. And then I'll meet you back over here. And then we'll go ahead and test it out and see if it works. Great. Thank you for the update. See you soon. All right. All right. Thanks. Okay. We are out in the machine shop. I see a blue coat. Patrick must be getting ready to do some real work. Hi, Patrick. Hey, guys. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, show you a little tag milling machine. Uh, and some of you have seen this in earlier videos and although it's a, it, this is a really simple operation But it was a good excuse to get you guys out here and especially for those that haven't seen this machine um, Well, here it is and basically what it is. It's a tag milling machine um, It's made by a small company in Arizona. So it's made here in the USA and we originally bought it at, as a manual milling machine and we actually used it manually, but we just got tired of, you know, uh, you know, with our hands cranking the cranks and all that. So we actually did the conversion ourselves to CNC and we're running Mach 3. Uh, let's see. Oh, and we do, as, as Lance mentioned. Oh, about the engraving. Yeah, we do, we do engraving on it. And see, we have this little rotary table for that. And this is pretty nice because it takes 5C collets, and that's what we usually use most of the time. 
and it's all connected. So that's kind of nice. And the other things we use it for, uh, you know, we don't use this for production. It's not a production machine. Uh, it's, it's strictly one-off type of things. Unless it's engraving. Engraving, we can do a little uh, production, but for real machining, it, it's just too small. Well, that's right. You programmed a machine that little stainless, that fancy little stainless steel uh, part of the lever for the coil on the on the micro drill press way back when. That's right. And see, that was a perfect application. Uh, you know, like if we want to make a tool or we need to make a replacement part for one of our machines, it's perfect for that. But it's not going to win any uh, speed comp competition. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we tested that already. <laughs> okay. So as you can see, I have the part in this 5C color block. And I've already set it all up. Um, X, Y, and Z are already set. So it's ready to start cutting. So are you ready, Lance? I think I'm going to get in here. Let's see how I do. Let's see. Oh, sure. OK, and for those interested, I'm going to be very conservative with this cut, just because we're only doing a slot. So there's no reason to, uh, uh, you know, to be too aggressive with it. So. The uh, spindle is running at 5,000 RPM. Um, my Wait. feed rate, my feed rate is going to be uh, 22 millimeters a minute. Okay, we're actually our depth. I'm actually I need a depth of about 12 and a half millimeter, but I'm going to go ahead and go at 14 millimeters. I'm going to go a little over, just as a little safeguard for my cutoff operation. I just want to be sure I exceed it. Um, and I think that's it. There's no fog buster? No. Or nothing uh, because it's brass? It's brass. It's yeah. free machining brass. Just so, so everybody's clear why with their fog. But it is there, but we're not using it. Yeah, this is really nice. You absolutely need this for, you know, for like, if we're going to cut stainless steel, titanium, you know, those type of metals. But for brass, Oh, and aluminum, you need the coolant too. Especially that fancy aluminum I make you machine. <laughs> that stuff's pretty, pretty up there. The 775. It is beautiful material. Oh, that cuts beautiful. Oh, yeah. Okay, ready? Yeah, let's get it. Okay, let's do it. Seems pretty conservative. Yeah, I didn't want to go too fast either because, it, as you can see, I had the end mill extended pretty far only because I didn't want to run the spindle into the collet block. It's almost there. There we go. And we're done. Yeah, look, that looks good. Here, let me take it off and I can show you real quick. You know, I can't decide whether you look better in that blue coat or whether it's the white coat or maybe I'm just a little biased to the blue coat. <laughs> I prefer the white coat myself. No. <laughs> Here it is. Uh, let's see if I can get to you. Uh, maybe a little hard to see. Let me see if I can get you. It came up. Oh, I got it. Oh, no, I see it. Okay. Uh, give it right there. Yeah, come at me. Uh, right there. I think we think we got it. Got it right there. Right there. Okay. Yeah, there you go, guys. See? I'm doing my best. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to take this out. Uh, just do the cutoff operation on the lathe. I won't show that because that's a really simple operation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'll go ahead and meet you back at the table. Great. Give it a shot. Well, thank you, Patrick. Let's see yeah. if I hope it fits when we're done. Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right. As promised, we are back in from out of the machine shop, aren't we, Patrick? Yes, we are. And we're going to do the real test. Okay, here's how the part came out. Let me see if I can get you a good close up. Got it. Got it. Right there with the slot. Beautiful. Yeah, so it came out really well. I'm really happy with it. Um, okay, the only thing I did test was I tested the fit. You know, still fits really, 
slides really easy. That's the way I wanted it, so it's great. Um, okay, this is this is the bracket that holds the dial indicator that secures right here. I just took it off so it's easier to handle. So let's see. Um, Oh, yeah, it fits really good. Nice press fit. The reason why it's easy to press in is because the slot. If the slot wasn't there, it would be pretty hard. Okay. I think that's good. That's how it looks. Good. Okay. Let's test it. I'm not even going to know this tool when it goes all back together with the new spindle and everything. I'm going to go, well, where did I get this thing at? I don't think it's probably going to run better than it ever has. Oh, yeah. <laughs> for sure. We made it work. It, it was accurate. It just Yeah, it works good. It's, it's very secure. Okay. So that's how it turned out. Isn't that nice? Look at that pretty MAR indicator. Oh, yeah. What, what a beauty. <laughs> a big upgrade for us. So it really we're, is. We're very thankful to have it. Yeah, so great. That's job, it. Job done. That's it. That's all you got to do? That's it. So we're finalized on this project. All right. Well, thanks, Patrick. All See right. you around. Thanks for following. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And if you leave us one of those comments, maybe we have something we can answer. We will never leave a question unanswered. Thank you.